Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. Um, you can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. You guys can hit the subscribe and enjoy our weekly content. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse, and we have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we have a Patreon. You guys can feel free to become members, and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Everything else that you guys are doing is very much appreciated. Um, a big shout out to the person that suggested this today. We're going to be reacting to, or I'm going to be reacting to, 10 surprising facts about Mary in Islam. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Miriam, aka Mary, the mother of Jesus, is not just a prominent figure in the religion of Christianity, but also in the religion of Islam. And in this episode, we're going to be exploring 10 surprising facts about Mary according to Islam. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton. And now we've done videos about Jesus according to the religion of Islam before. And quite a bit of you asked for us to do a video on Mary, the mother of Jesus, according to the religion of Islam. So some of these facts may sound familiar, especially if you've seen our videos about Jesus in the religion of Islam, but either way, I still want you to watch from 10 all the way down to number one so you don't miss any of them. So starting with fact number 10, she gave birth to Jesus, although she was a virgin. It's a popular belief in Christianity, but it's also found in the religion of Islam as well. According to the Quran, Surah 19 verses 20 to 21, it says this, she said, how can I have a boy while no man has touched me and I have not been unchaste? He said, thus it will be, your Lord says, it is easy for me. Also, because she gave birth while being a virgin, she was falsely accused of infidelity. One passage in the Quran says this, she brought him, Jesus, to her people, carrying him. They said, O oh Mary, you have certainly done a thing unprecedented. O oh sister of Aaron, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your mother unchaste. So of course, they have the questions like, hey, you're a virgin. How, what, what, what where'd you get a baby from? Fact number eight, according to the religion of Islam, she was also chosen by Allah above all women. And this belief is based from the Quran, Surah 3, verses 42, that goes, when the angel said, O oh Mary, indeed Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of the worlds. And this is probably why there is an entire chapter based on Mary in the Quran. And this is fact number seven. Her name is actually the central focal point of the 19th chapter of the Quran and it's titled Surah Maryam. And in fact, Mary is the only woman that's actually referred to by her first name in all of the Quran. So Muslims view this as a very honorable status that was granted to her. And usually it's mostly prophets of God as well as messengers messengers and angels who have their first names mentioned in the Quran. Mary was also someone who experienced miracles right in front of her eyes. She experienced many of them continuously as a matter of fact. In the Quran, Surah 3 verses 37, this is what it says. Every time Zechariah entered upon her in the prayer chamber, he found with her provision. He said, O oh Mary, from where is this coming to you? She said, it is Allah. Indeed, Allah provides for whom he wills without account. So Muslim scholars do agree that this text shows that food and sustenance were miraculously given to her from God regularly, seemingly out of nowhere. Also guys, I just wanted to mention, like I did say that we did a video about facts about Jesus according to the religion of Islam. I do recommend you check that video out after you finish watching this video. I'll link to it below in the video description section. Very interesting, a lot of similarities to Christianity and some differences. Yeah, it's very fascinating. Also, I'm going to link to a playlist of videos that we've done about different people throughout history up until the present day. I recommend that playlist, especially if you want to learn a lot more about people from different parts of the world. Continuing now with fact number five, there's another passage about Mary in the Quran that 
kind of gives you a sense of her character. So Surah 66 verses 12 says this, And Mary the daughter of Imran who guarded her chastity, she believed in the words of her Lord and his scriptures and was devoutly obedient. So of course, like I did mention earlier in this episode, she was chaste, she guarded her chastity very well, but Mary was also very pious, meaning that she was very dedicated to her religion and she also lived a modest life. The next thing to note is that according to popular Muslim belief, Mary is one of the two most important women in the religion of Islam. There was a woman by the name of Fatima who was the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad as well as the wife of Ali ibn Abi Talib and she's probably the most important or at least the most well-known female figure in Islam. So much so that Fatima was given the title of Al-Zara meaning the illustrious. Mary however, she's the dominant female figure in the Quran. So for most religions looking in, they wouldn't necessarily associate Mary so much so with the religion of Islam, but from the Islamic perspective, Mary is held in such high regard in the religion. Next up at number three, it's a historical fact relating to Mary. When some of the early Muslims were actually fleeing persecution in Mecca in 615, they fled to King Nijis of Abyssinia, which is now modern Ethiopia, and this was a Christian kingdom. So when the king then went and asked them, them for an account of this new faith, which was Islam, Jafar ibn Abi Talib, he recited the Quran, and that's taken from Surah 19 verses 16 to 21 about Mary. So the king heard this and he recognized that there's a lot of similarities to Christianity. So what he did was he offered Muslims asylum and protection during the time of persecution because of this. For fact number two, it's interesting to note that in several places in the Middle East, including places like Turkey, Lebanon, you'll find Christian shrines that are dedicated to Mary and that they're often visited by Muslim pilgrims. Although it is very frowned upon by the Salafi Wahhabi branches of Sunni Islam, which by the way is the official form of Islam in Saudi Arabia, the practice however still exists and it has ancient roots and many Muslims still around the world do visit these shrines to Mary. And the final thing about Mary in the religion of Islam that I want to share in this episode is that Mary is known by various names. Like I mentioned, Fatima was given a name, the illustrious, but Mary is also given certain titles in Islam. She's called Kanita, and Mary is called this in Surah 66 verses 12, and this means constant submission to God, and it also refers to her being fully devoted in prayer. Like I mentioned earlier in this episode, she was very dedicated to her religion and was constantly in the prayer chamber all the time. Mary is also known as Siddika, that means she who confirms the truth or she who has faith. Mary's called Siddiqua twice in the Quran, as a matter of fact, in Surah 5 verses 73 to 75, and she's also called that in Surah 66 verses 12. Then there is Sajida, she who prostrates to God in worship. That's also a title for Mary. Rakia is another title, and that means she who bows down to God in worship. Tahira is also another title, and that means she who is purified. Mustafia is she who was chosen. And then the final name is Sa Ima, meaning she who fast. It's believed that Mary actually fasted for one half of the year in certain Muslim schools of thought. All right, guys, so that's it for this episode about 10 surprising facts about Mary according to the origin of Islam. So as you can see, there's many similarities to the account of Mary according to Christianity. And there's some differences as well. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and be sure to leave your thoughts and comments down below. Don't forget to check out the recommended episodes that I did mention in this episode. Episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in another episode. Very interesting video. Always love learning. Um facts or at least what he chose i mean people would still compile videos about mary and still show us other facts or give us other facts otherwise this was amazing and always um interesting to watch um it's actually it's actually nice to know that um there were two most important women in islam that are just out there but i'm sure there were other women as well that were important otherwise so long as two people re received recognition, that's more than enough for the world out there or religions out there. Otherwise, 
there's a reason as to why God chose them. Also, a big shout out to the person that suggested this. If there's anything like this that you want us to react to, let us know by dropping the comment in the section. Let us know by dropping the link in the comment section and we'll do it for you and I'll see you in my next reaction video.